Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code, the ZIP Code. Today on The Build Show, we're gonna talk about something that our HVAC guys screwed up, kind of throwing them under the bus, but why we have AeroSeal on site to handle that. Let's do it now. We are at our redo house. This is 1,700 square feet, slab on grade. I threw the HVAC guys under the bus in the intro, but we should talk about what the HVAC system, system is here on this job. We have three ductless high wall mini splits. We have a three bedroom house. Essentially, there's a bedroom on that end of the house, a bedroom on that end of the house, and a bedroom behind this wall. We actually have office, office, and uh, bedroom one or primary suite. And so if you're paying super close attention, we're talking about AeroSeal today. That is a duct sealing product from the same people that brought us Aero Barrier, where they pressurize the system and fill it, with seal, fill it with sealant. We'll talk about that in a second. So why are they here if we have ducted or ductless high wall units? So what we have is we actually have an ERV system here, the energy recovery ventilator. We have two pipes coming from the mechanical room to the outside, and then we have different distribution ports throughout the house. That ductwork is insulated six inch hard pipe that comes from inside the envelope. It goes outside the envelope and comes back in. I know that's an uncommon thing for our firm if you've really followed our HVAC systems over the years, but in this house, we have low ceilings. Like I said, we're 1700 square feet. There's not much space in this house. In fact, when I said mechanical room, I probably should have said mechanical closet. Uh, I think it's smaller than the closet that we keep coats in at my house. So it's a very small, tight space. So the only option we had was for our ductwork to go up, across, and back down and in. It's not a huge deal, but it's also not our preference. Here, we took that six inch duct to the top side of the trusses, across the bottom side of the, or the top side of the bottom cord of the truss, which is a two by four, and back down which means we still have quite a bit of insulation on top of it, somewhere in the realm of 20 inches of insulation potentially in most places. So we're not worried about the um, temperature loss because the ductwork is sleeved with the, whatever it is, R5 insulation anyway, and then it's also buried in insulation. However, we ran a blower door, I'm pointing at the door that's back there, we ran a blower door and we realized that we had substantially more leakage than we thought we would have uh, the scope of work on this house is billed as one ACH 50 or less, and we were at like 1.4 ACH 50. And we immediately started going, okay, which window is not locked, which vent or drain line is open, and where are we getting that leakage? And very quickly walking past the mechanical closet, we realized that that ductwork was rushing uh, and that that was our problem. So we masked it off, and our actually envelope is at like 0.8. ACH 50 and so then we have quite a bit of our building leakage from that ductwork in the attic so this is a communication problem on our fault we, we should have made sure that our new HVAC guys knew that we were trying to seal all of our ductwork this is actually kind of a standard practice in the rest of the market even in in Columbia Missouri we have uh, nobody doing duct sealing unless it's explicitly requested in the scope of work or the plans or by us the contractor and so the problem that we run into is, okay, like I said, there's very little space up there. It's full of insulation already. We missed it. How do we resolve that problem? That's where the folks at AeroSeal come in. We have to give uh, a lot of credit to Duck Brothers. Uh, they're based in Kansas City. They have multiple places across the country, and they were nice enough to come out and help us with this. And uh, specifically, we'll give Carlos a shout out too, because Carlos, their installer in Kansas City, knocked us out of the park today. We have the original version kind of, of Aero Barrier. So we have all in one kit. We have some tube plastic. What they've done here is there's a fan and the aerosolized sealant in this. It's sealant at this point, it's not aerosolized yet. And they have intake port for air and they have an output port. That output port in this instance feeds to a Y because we have four ducts that we're trying to seal. So just to only have to do it twice, they hooked up two at a time. So we have a short length of tube and then tubing that connects to our ductwork. They then turn the fan on and they pressurize the system. And just as it does in the aero barrier, it just feeds through all those little leaks. The 
turbulence of the sealant going through the little leaks causes it to catch on a surface and congeal, for lack of a better term, and then start to seal the ductwork. And you can see their system's quite great because it allows for real-time results because the, the manometer system that they have on this, uh, basically they have um, blower door parts inside their aero seal that then gives them real-time computer readout. And you can watch on the graph things tick down to less and less air sealing. Uh, we, so we did two different setups here, two on one set of ductwork and two on another set of ductwork. The second one was, was the worst part and we were able to reduce the duct leakage by 88%. So like our cumulative was something in the realm, I'm looking at our installer, 60 square inches to start out with and we got it down to like three square inches, which is kind of like, you know, that. It's almost nothing when it comes down to it. Uh, so why is that important? The why is that important is the actual really important part behind all of this. If we're leaking air into the attic, that means we're wasting effort with the air that we're pushing through the, the system. And if we're leaking air from the attic, then we're pulling unconditioned, untempered, unfiltered air back into a system that is specifically in this case, just for ventilation and is supposed to be giving us clean, fresh, tempered air. And so we've eliminated the purpose of having the system. Now, if this were an HVAC system, if this were the heating and cooling elements and we had regular traditional ductwork running through the attic, we're pumping 100 and, uh, 140 degree air in the attic into our ductwork all of a sudden, and the ductwork in the middle of the summer is supposed to be in the like 60 degree range. Like, how are we gonna manage any energy efficiency in a system where part of our air is not part of the system and part of the system's air? It's the key to energy efficiency when we talk about our ductwork side of things. That's why ductwork sealing is part of the, becoming part of the code nationwide. This system, even with a false start where we had a piece of uh, our, our plastic tubing come loose, it took like 10 minutes to seal 80 feet worth of ductwork. The installer, Carlos, is telling me that like most of the homes take a couple hours from setup to tear down. Uh, he does two of these a day. So like he goes to multiple jobs in one day and he's able to set up, make all this happen, get some readings, turn the system on, fill the ductwork, Clear this, clear the ductwork out, pack up and get in and get to another project in the same day. So like this is an easy, simple system that is, when it comes down to it, probably pretty darn cost effective for what it does. Uh, I would put it in the realm of like, it's that bathtub renovation company. It's gonna be easier to recoat that bathtub than it is to rip it out. So they know their value. They know what they can provide for us. They can get in and out. And then we didn't have to get in the attic and mess up our insulation. We didn't have to get into the attic and pull all that insulation back and hunt for those little leaks. This system found it on its own without anybody having to get up into the attic. Just a couple people standing in the kitchen watching a computer basically. In and out, we're done. So check out AeroSeal. This is something that uh, has actually been around substantially longer than Aero Barrier. I think the AeroSeal system is actually around in the 90s even in Austin, Texas, and they just adapted that formula to be able to do a whole building with. So we've worked with these guys before. They're great. You should check it out. And uh, they're nationwide. Like they're in almost every market. And if not, they're close. So check them out. Give them a call. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to check out the Unbuild It podcast. That's Steve Basic, Peter Yost, and myself talking about building, building science, business of building. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Until next time, thanks for watching.